They want to thank you for coming. And family, we want to thank you for letting us be part of this. Because this is, this is an important lady in my life for 30-something years. And many of us here were touched deeply by her. Really, really. No kidding. Not just words. There was a day in the life of Jesus. He stood up at the festival and He said, If anyone should thirst... Is anybody thirsty for spiritual things? And he spoke to a certain small group. In any generation, there's a small group of people that are truly thirsty for spiritual things. There doesn't seem to be many. There wasn't in his day. Most had gone the way of finding their happiness in human human ways. Earthly ways. But he said, if you're thirsty for spiritual things, then come to me and drink. And by that he meant to believe that Christ had died on the cross, that He would die on the cross, that He would be buried and raised from the dead. He defeated sin and paid for it in full. And He defeated death. And He did it for us. And he said, if you'll come and believe that, and you'll grow in grace, then there will be a day out of your innermost being, this empty place inside of you will flow rivers of living water. Rivers, plural. Lots of water, living water. That's the verse that I think of when I think of Sylvia. Just rivers of wisdom and love and kindness and patience and certainty came from her. To me. She was a great ministry, minister of a woman to women. The Bible says that the older women should nurture the younger women. If there was anybody in my life that, that exemplified that, it's her. Understood that the day before she had her stroke, she wrote 16 letters to different women. I don't know if that's the case, but it would sound like her. She wrote many to me. I told her that I was going to put them in the casket with her when she died. She said, you better not. You better keep them and read them. That was Sylvia. Of course, I don't think they're going to fit in whatever bottle that she's in now. We want to go to the Lord. I thank you for letting me be part of this. I thank you for letting me open this in prayer. So if you'll go look to the Lord. Let's talk to him. Father, what a great gift you've given us of this lady. A gift of wisdom and friendship and of watching a woman grow and go through the hard times and the good times and the times where she was full of great circumstances and times when there seemed to be little. And yet, the stability, the smile was never, never changed, never was different. I saw her so many times from this very pulpit in that second row smiling and encouraging me, discussing the concepts that we discussed in the lesson and just what a great lady, Father, what a great minister to my life. I pray here today that as we discuss these things and we recall her and with fond memories that you would bless each of us, that that your name would be glorified, that Jesus Christ through this lady Sylvia's life, would be lifted up and we may see Him clearly. We love You, Father. We praise You. In Christ's name, Amen. Captain Elise, who is the greatest among us, (laughs) clearly, the most beautiful in all, is here to speak on her grandmother's behalf. So, Elise. Thank you, Al, and thank each of you for being here to celebrate the life of my grandmother, Sylvia Dennis. To be Sylvia's granddaughter was a gift, and whether you were around her for just 10 minutes one time or every day, you left whatever scenario feeling empowered, wise, and as if you could conquer the world. If at any point during our conversation with her, you happen to mention a specific hobby or interest, excuse me, I don't know how to fix that, but 
Um, you could guarantee that shortly after and for years to come, you would receive something from, from her related to this interest. I realized this about her when I was in the seventh grade and express, expressed interest in learning how to crochet. Imagine waking up on Christmas morning and looking under the tree ecstatic that you had more presents than anyone, even your older brother. Imagine several hours later, after all the presents were open, that you now had quite the collection of yarn in every color you could possibly imagine. Standing up here today, I cannot do it justice how much yarn I actually received that day, but just know that I had, ever, had I ever actually learned how to crochet, I could crochet each of you a scarf, your kids a scarf, your parents a scarf, your neighbors a scarf, and your neighbor's neighbor a scarf. My grandmother touched the lives of every person she met. Each and every one of you here, I can confidently say that you, you have had at least one instance when she impacted your life. Every person she met was her friend, and if you were lucky enough, you eventually became her family. She wrote letters upon letters upon letters, all day, every day. Sometimes they were written for a specific purpose, or sometimes because you were just on her mind. There were days I would receive three letters and an email in one day. <sighs> um, the letter would be filled with news clippings of things I loved or a common interest we shared. At the age of nine, I was adamant that Miss Piggy was my idol and that I should look up to her for adult guidance. Based on the news clippings I received about a month ago, Miss Piggy is still my idol and this was truly the most realistic de decision I ever made. My grandmother and I shared a love for many things, fitness, health, patriotism, an intense love for Richard Simmons and sweating to the oldies, <laughs> wine, she loved to rub my feet, I love for her to rub my feet, <laughs> 2 a.m. phone conversations, cookie, cooking, and the list could go on. We were incredibly close from the moment she held me the day I was born, a moment she never let me forget, even as a grumpy, dramatic teenager, until this very moment. I was a star of her life. I know this because she told me in every letter, in every conversation, and at every moment we were together. I followed in the footsteps of many men in my family and chose to serve this great nation in the United States Army. On my toughest days, in the toughest situations, she guided me through. People used to make jokes when I was deployed to Afghanistan because when the mail would arrive, I would, I would have stacks of letters from my grandmother with postage on the same day. She would write words of encouragement, but there were times when I would receive letters only about Roger Federer. <laughs> when I was deployed to Africa, she sent me fudge because it's my favorite. I had no idea how it got, got there in its correct form and tasted so good because every day I felt like I was going to melt. But she brought a smile to my face and about 50 other soldiers that day. My grandmother makes my service to country effortless. On her final day, she was her truest self, celebrating the victory of, victory of every tennis player that beat Venus and Serena Williams and surrounded, and surrounded by family, um, the family she loved unconditionally. And boy, we are a special group. <laughs> Um, for today, I find it acceptable that you are sad, but only for a moment. She has left a lasting mark, and for years to come, you will naturally look to her for the same guidance and conversation that you always did. She set the example for what the truest love looks like after 63 years of marriage to my grandfather, and she lived the genuine life of a Southern Christian lady. Thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Heather. Um, she's our eldest grandchild and the person that is the truest representation of my mother's pure, pure heart. Okay, I probably won't look at y'all when I'm reading because I'm not good at this but I felt like I needed to do this. So just bear with me. I'm a little nervous. I'm not a uh, public speaker. Um, just after uh, she passed, um, we kind of sit, were sitting in the living room, and I happened upon a book that was her journal. Not really a journal. It was just a book of her favorite quotes, which was The Treasure. Um, and I took it. And I told the rest of the family I would make copies because uh, we were all pretty much like, this is awesome. Um, one of the first quotes in the beginning was, the surest sign of wisdom is constant cheerfulness. 
My nanny was a wise, wise woman. She was also a very elegant woman who carried herself with dignity and grace. She was fun, funny, always up for adventure, loved a challenge, and was a force to be reckoned with in any challenge. She was thoughtful and was always a pleasure to be around. She loved to read, write, cook. She loved dance, music, side note here, uh, even when she was sick and had had the stroke and couldn't talk, every time music came on, she would, she would tap her foot and dance. So um, she loved music, all kinds of music. Uh, she loved to exercise. She loved butterflies and she loved tennis. She loved to celebrate everything. She loved unconditionally. She adored her husband. She absolutely adored her husband and her family. She loved her savior. She was absolutely beautifully stunning inside and out. She was the most unique human I've ever known. Her life was spent encouraging others all over the world. She poured herself into truly knowing and loving other people. Her legacy to me began when she introduced me to my savior. When I was three years old, she told me this story all the time. When I was three years old, she said I had, we had come to church, and after church we were in the grocery store, and she said, um, I tapped her on the leg and said, who is this Jesus? And she said, so I told you who Jesus was. And I don't remember time ever not knowing him after that. She taught me from the time I was a young child that beauty flows from the inside out, and that was something that she always exemplified. She shared her love of fairy tales with me. I will never forget having picnics in the forest while she read fairy tales by George MacDonald and C.S. Lewis. She called me her Heather from Heaven. She had a special title for all of us, and every letter or note began that special way. In her book of quotes, she wrote, My prayer is... Dot, 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 to make me an answer to someone else's prayer. She was an answered prayer to so many. My nanny loved lemonade. When I was around 10 years old, she took me to have lunch at Wendy's, and she said, let me teach you a trick. She ordered two waters, a little side of lemons, and some sugar packets, and she showed me how to make my own lemonade. You've heard, you've heard it said that when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. She was all about making the best in every circumstance. She, was, she always saw the silver lining, always looked for the best in every situation. She was the lemonade-making master. I will miss her more than words can articulate. Life will not be the same without her. But I know she was completely confident and at peace about her next chapter. I know that she received a warrior's welcome into heaven on Monday at 12.42 p.m., and she was greeted with the words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. In one of her notebooks, Nanny had a note about Maya Angelou's son, who was noted as saying of his mother after her death, He did not live in her shadow, he lived in her light. I can say without a doubt, our family, and probably many of you, has and will come to live in the radiant light magnified by my Nanny. She had this quote by Helen Keller listed as one of her favorites. It actually said, one of my favorites. <laughs> my friends have made the story of my life. In a thousand ways, they have turned my limitations into beautiful privileges and enabled me to walk serene and happy in the shadow cast by my deprivation. I will leave you with these three points that she had on this handwritten piece of note stuck in one of her journals which was really awesome. She said, always be kind, keep a loving heart, and never give up. And then this is the harder one. <laughs> this is how I put it at the end. <laughs> An English proverb that she also had on the inside of that book that said, just when the caterpillar thought it was, its world was over, it became a butterfly. Thanks for letting me share about my nanny. Well, I do express from the family their deep appreciation of your attendance today and uh, for all of the prayers over the months for Sylvia. Uh, we 
we couldn't begin to thank you enough for all of that. You know, when we set in the gate, the gates of the city, the children are asked to come and speak on behalf of their deceased. And boy, did that family pick two good ones. The rest of them, however, wrote theirs out, and we'll talk about it in just a moment. The Dennis family and us go way back to the founding of this church. They were part of our founding families. I had no idea uh, how unique founding families become to a young pastor. But over the years, I mean, they are just the cement that holds it all together. And we have many of them today. Uh, Mr. Penn is with us. He was part of that founding family. The Baxters are with us, part of that founding family. Uh, the Simrels, part of that founding family, just in case you thought we were over the hill. We've went over the hill when we're on the back side of it. So I, I, thank, I thank them for coming and being with us today. There are so many things as I thought about Sylvia. Uh, there are just so many things I could speak about Sylvia, having known them uniquely for uh, 42, 43 years, uh, and really the best of friends. We pastors don't get a lot of <laughs> special, special friends. But boy, they were, they were special friends. And, and I tell you, I've seen them as a couple go some, through some horrendous experiences as, a hu as humans. And I never saw them waver. And as I reflected and thought about that, I thought about that okay. Okay, Father, I'd like, to, I'd like to do that. I'd like to speak on that behalf today. And he gave me Psalms, the very first uh, book of the Psalms. And in that first book, in the first three verses, that's Psalms 1. I want to read it to you, and then I want to tell you what I found in the life of Sylvia that I will share with you today. Here's what it says. It, it speaks about what, what is a blessed person. What is a blessed believer? And he starts it out, how blessed is the believer who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scorners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. That's what he's not. Sometimes you have to decide what you're not going to be to find out what you ought to be. And the first part of the verse tells you what kind of choices Sylvia had that she refused to accept. She, she refused to be, that, to be that blessed person. She chose not to walk in the counsel of the wicked of the world, nor stand in the path of the sinner of the world, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. She certainly could have been as a human in this world, but she chose not to do that. And the what caused her to change her life was that she found the Lord and found the Word of God. And she took delight in the Word of God and meditated on it daily. Meditate on And you really, if you're going to be what, she's, what the Bible says, a blessed person, to get to where Sylvia got, you've got to find that in your life. The real discovery in your life is salvation in Christ, and then the importance of his word of God in your daily living. It says meditating on it day and night. Now listen, here's, the, here's where that gets you. Uh, the, she, she chose not to be that. She chose rather to be a blessed person by finding who that blessed person is in the word of God. Listen to what she found. This is at least what I think she found that I found in Psalms. She will be like a tree firmly planted by the stream of waters which yield its fruit in, sea, in its seasons and its leaf does not wither and whatever she does, it prospers. Speaking of spiritual, 
And when I thought of Sylvia, I thought, boy, if there was ever a tree that had been planted for God in this world, it was Sylvia Dennis. She found this concept in her life. She chose not to go the way of the world. She chose to go the way of God. And that what got her there was salvation in Christ and the importance of the Word of God in her daily think thinking and life. I want to remind you that, and I'm going to share you with how the family found this in her life. Listen, I'm going to tell you the four things. I'm going to read what the family wrote about their mother and nanny. Listen, a tree firmly planted by the water, by the streams of water. And why is that important? Well, we know the nutritional value of the water and what it gives to the tree to make that tree be the solid tree it ought to be in the storm that comes. You know, when a storm comes to a, a solid tree, a firmly planted tree that's got a good root system, all the storm does is just prune it. It gets, all, it gets rid of all the dead leaves and all, all, the, all the dead limbs. In other words, that storm in life just does something that exercises it. The tree gets exercised and becomes stronger and greater than it was before the storm came. That's why it's important to have it firmly planted, rooted, at where its deep roots are being nourished on a day-to-day -day basis. The second thing that it tells us, it, uses, it yields fruit. A healthy tree, one that's planted well and has a good source of nutrition, yields fruit in its season. Being a farm boy, I know what that means. You know, you can't just go out and pick it any time. You got to pick it when the season is. And how important that was. There is a season for the fruit of your life. And certainly, Phil, Sylvia certainly had that. And the leaf that does not wither. In other words, a good strong tree produces good strong leaves. When you put those two together, if you're a guy like me, I never could remember what the trees were. I mean, if they had nuts, I knew it was a nut tree. You know, if they had pears, I knew it was a pear tree. But just to go out on a normal year and look at it, I, I, I didn't know that. And I was a farm boy, still couldn't figure that out. Well, what's interesting about fruit and leaves, if you're not an expert in the trees, it, the, the fruit and the leaves will tell you what it is. Right? The fruit and the leaves. When I was a little kid, and maybe some of you go back to a school when they actually taught these things rather than others, we, we used to go out and pick leaves, come them in, and, and wax them. You remember that? Remember waxing leaf? Oh, what a young crowd. Come on, I know. <laughs> come on, quit now with me. I mean, we, we, is that the only thing we did in the north? You guys didn't do that in the south? Okay, just checking. Just checking. We, we do that, and then I could, I, you know, I'd, I, and I kept all those things, right? I kept all the things. That's an oak leaf, and that came from that's an oak tree, see? See, the fruit and the leaves tell you a lot about the tree, what the tree is. Now, what I want to do is I want to share in that order with you the things that was told me. For example, I want to read about the tree planted. Here's what Kim wrote. Yeah, Kim, the daughter, one of the daughters. And here's a, here's a strong tree that bears fruit, healthy leaves, prosperous tree. Her devotion to my father, or to daddy, was effortless and always given with love and never begrudgingly, no matter what the circumstances in their life, they were always on the same team always. Boy, is that great testimony, huh? A lot of us ought to take that home, shouldn't we? John, her husband, Kim's husband, wrote, I will miss her edits to my life. Since well before falling in love with and marrying her wonderful daughter, Being an old country boy, we call that milk and the cow. <laughs> so we call that. I want, just coincidental, he knew I was going to read this. That's a good try, John. But I let it out the bag, Bubba. 
We could all learn something from that, couldn't we? <laughs> Sylvia has been my best friend, my most added supporter, advent, advent supporter, a great spiritual advisor and influence in my life, my most tref- trusted confidant. Tell he's a big wig in the army, can't you? <laughs> always, she, she always listened, always wrote, always offered sound advice. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you do, Sylvia, you're going to get this one too. And a look <laughs> could let me know I was full of bull. <laughs> and I, I ought to rethink that idea. Have we not all had that look? Yeah, that's a look you don't like as a pastor. (laughs) And the fruit. This comes from summer. Good to see you again. Nanny made me feel special and beautiful and loved without condition. I will remember most the thousands of love letters that I received from her throughout my life just to tell me I am adored, special, and that how she really made me feel. That's true about Sylvia, wasn't it? She could do that. She had a wonderful way with that. Uh, Jonathan. Sylvia's gift for correspondence Boy, she was a writer, wasn't she? Uh, everybody knew Sylvia, dude. She was a writer. You just hope she didn't keep all the things that she wrote about you someplace. <laughs> I want to see that book before it leaves Birmingham. <laughs> what I want to do. Sylvia's gift for correspondence to the wives and mother-in-laws of her grandchildren was special. But that's, that's unique. That's, that's wonderful. I mean, that's really going out there in that. Standing it that far out is, and I, I bet your wife knows that too, doesn't she? She never forgot a personal detail or hesitated to accept anyone into her family. Mm. Leaves that never wither. Buck. That's Heather's other half. The bit, the bit, the bit. He got the better (laughs) half of this deal. When I stopped to think about all the ways that Sylvia left a mark on my life, they all seemed to come from her love. She loved me. Uh, She loved her husband. She loved her family. She loved her God. She loved God's word. Her love was sacrificial. Her love was absolutely unconditional. Her love helps us to catch a glimpse of the love that God has for each one of us. Well, how true is that? And Heather, though, she didn't have enough spotlight, threw threw a little something back in the pot. My nanny was and always will be my hero. And we all feel that way. Sherry. I save Sherry's for last because... Give me a moment. Sherry stepped up and did a job for this wonderful lady. I could never thank you enough. She had a tough, tough job. And I mean, she stepped up and did for her mother what no one else in this world could do. No one. She never whimpered. She always took it as a blessing. 
she was a good choice too because she has a bu bulldog's mentality. <laughs> when you go to hospitals, you've got to have that person on your team if you're going to get out of there. <laughs> Boy, I saw her at action. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I'm glad she's on our team. <laughs> I am glad she's on our team. I want to have a moment to tell you from my heart how deeply appreciative I am of that. And here's what she wrote. She said, this is a part of a quote my mother had recently written down. It caught my attention. Hope is the ability to hear the music of the future. I think I might put that in my book. Because we're always struggling to define hope out, away from the English concept into the biblical idea. Not only did she hear the music, but she serenaded everyone who loved with undying optimism, encouragement, and love. Her greatest joy in life was giving and motivating others to reach their highest potential. She offered a spark of divinity to everyone she met, and her greatest desire was to be a blessing and do no harm. A truly rare and, beaut a rare and beautiful soul who's re who reflected Christ with joy unconditionally. And for Mr. Bill Dennis, I'm going to give you a quote I know would come from his heart. Because Mr. Dennis is not going to say goodbye. He's looking and living in that moment of saying hello. He's not going to say goodbye. And I salute you for that. I salute you for that, my buddy. So I'm going to give you one. I know this is your heart, and I know this was true for your life and Sylvia. Because from Proverbs 18, 22, that most of us are familiar with, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains grace from the Lord. That was certainly Mr. Dennis and Sylvia. That was certainly true. When Mr. Dennis found Sylvia, he had found a good thing. And a good, smart southern boy snatched her up. And then he realized that it was a gift from God. And this is what makes it special. Her children have risen up and blessed her, and her husband has as well. And there's not much more I can say about it. I will tell you this, though. The family wants you to stay and share with them in our fellowship our meal that follows this immediately downstairs. And in a moment, we're going to close in a word of prayer, and the family is going to go first so that they can receive you. And uh, thank you for coming personally and doing those things. Yes. Yeah. Colonel Penn is here. I'm sorry? I have told Mr. Penn that he is not permitted to leave the premises. <laughs> I have until he says something to you. That was not easy for a spec four to do <laughs> to, a, to a colonel. But I mustered up enough courage to tell him that, hoping I wouldn't get in trouble. So I know Mr. Penn will be sure, Mr. Penn, to make me look good now and not leave without seeing Mr. Bill. Okay? So remember, go downstairs afterwards, share with us, uh, spend some time with us. Let, us. let this family share with you a celebration meal because we believe this is a celebration and you've heard it. You know, we're not good at goodbyes, but we're great at hellos.
And that's what we believe about Sylvia. We believe the next time it won't be goodbye. We don't say goodbye. We just say we're waiting to say hello. And so we believe that. Let me close in prayer. Then you'll notice the family slip out so that they can receive you. And then we'll be dismissed for a meal. Please stay and eat with us. Okay? Please stay. Be sure to see the family downstairs. Let's pray and then the family will leave and then you'll be dismissed. Well, our Heavenly Father, how thankful we are for all the people that have come. We've had so many calls from all over the United States that wanted to be here to express their deep appreciation. All part of this letter writing ministry of Sylvia. Many of these things go back so many years with the lives of people and they just wanted to be sure that the family knew that there were just hundreds of people, hundreds of people that would have liked to have been here were not able but send their prayers and blessings to the family and how thankful we are for that. And we know that they will, the families will hear from these people over the course of time as they are able to extend that. We're thankful, Father, for what our hearts have, uh, have felt and our ears have heard in regard to a blessed woman, blessed in so many different ways, Father, but mostly through you. And I know how, how thankful you are to have her in your presence today and how thankful she is to be there. I just know that's so true, Father. I now pray, Father, for the meal downstairs that you would nourish it we're thankful father that you would prepare it we thank you father for the grace that was provided we pray the fellowship that will come in the celebration of a wonderful life for we've made this prayer in jesus name all right family